Good morning, Switzerland, and good evening, Japan. It's a great pleasure to have uh, Nao Nori Ueda Sensei for this particular talk uh, on um, machine learning and AI seminar series for RICAN and CIS. Um, Nao Nori Sensei received his bachelor's, master's, and PhD uh, degrees from Osaka University. Um, in Japan from 82, 84, and 92. In 84, he joined the Electrical Communication Laboratories NTT Japan, where he was engaged in research on image processing, pattern recognition, and computer vision. In 91, he joined the NTT Communication Science Laboratories. From 93 to 94, he was a visiting scholar at Purdue University. Uh, in 2010 to 13, director of NTT Communication Science Laboratories as well. He is the head of the NTT. He was the head of the NTT Machine Learning and Data Science Center since, no, he has been the head of the NTT Machine Learning and Data Science Center since 2014 and the director of Ueda Research Laboratory since 2016. He engaged in research on image processing, pattern recognition, statistical machine learning, and data mining. Since 2016, he's a deputy director for Center for Adv Advanced Intelligence Project, RICAN where he engaged in AI research on medical science, weather, natural sciences, such as disaster pre prevention and reduction, and so social science based on machine learning technology. He's a research supervisor, mathematical information platform, Japan Science and Technology Agency, CREST, and is a visiting professor at Kyoto University Graduate School of Informatics and Kobe University Graduate School of System Informatics. Now, it's a great pleasure to, to have you again here, now Nori Sensei. I'm uh, looking forward to your talk. Thank you, kind introduction. So uh, today, uh, let me introduce uh, uh, machine learning technology for disaster prevention mitigation. Okay. So uh, uh, let me briefly introduce myself. Uh, I've been working at NTT Basic Research Laboratory, and uh, I'm also work at the uh, IP at the cross appointment. Uh, at NTT, I've been doing research on machine learning based, uh, based on the Bayesian statistics, especially non point space. And uh, uh, these are uh, recent papers. So uh, also, you may be interested in these uh, papers, but uh, today uh, I'd like to introduce a recent research result of the disaster resilience science team at Lincoln. Okay. Uh, as you know, uh, Japan has uh, suffered tremendous uh, natural disasters, including uh, major earthquakes, tsunamis, and typhoons. So the disaster prevention and mitigation are important social issues in Japan. So I established this team uh, to solve these social issues by AI technologies. So uh, currently uh, in my team, there are nine researchers, three are experts in earthquake and uh, the others are uh, machine learning researchers. So, of course, this research requires expert knowledge and data from experts. So, uh, we are collaborating with the whole organization to conduct our, our research. I mean, the National Research Institute uh, Art Science and Disaster Regions, Japan Meteorological Agency, Asking Research Institute, University of Tokyo, and the Lincoln Center for Computational Science. Uh, this center has a Fugaku, you know. Okay. Um, uh, we are conducting research and development of AI technologies on the following topics. The earthquake damage evaluation uh, to evaluate how much uh, damage will occur by a uh, mega quark. And uh, earthquake occurrence forecasting, uh, focusing on non-pi track historical sequence uh, prediction. Okay. Uh, also, we are uh, conducting research on automatic generation of hazard maps for landslides and flooding by using machine learning technology. And uh, also, uh, we are conducting the weather forecasting uh, uh, with collaboration with uh, JMA and uh, forecasting the high accurate weather forecasting and also a typhoon intensification prediction using the machine learning technology. So uh, today, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce the following topics. Uh, uh, especially, uh, I elaborate a bit on the third topic, uh, including the home relation. Okay. 
And for, for the others, uh, I'll only give a brief outline of a few ongoing you know, research topics. Okay, uh, this is the first uh, topic, a mega crop damage estimation by HPC um, and AI. Okay, so uh, this research is a grand motion simulation technology by supercomputer and machine learning. So, of course, simulation is very important for uh, inland aspects because if we can estimate how much damage will occur uh, to buildings, so we can uh, reinforce those buildings in advance. So, why difficult? So, because uh, soil at uh, depth of 100 meters from the surface has a complex geometry uh, that changes every 10 meter. And uh, also uh, ground shaking due to earthquake becomes highly nonlinear. So uh, conventionally, uh, nonlinear wave equation uh, is simulated by supercomputer using a 3D soil structure. Okay, uh, these are soil. Uh, so more accurate simulation uh, requires more accurate 3D soil structure, soil structure data. But boring is time consuming and costly. Moreover, the presence of uh, buildings and uh, other structures makes boring impossible. Okay. So, therefore, traditionally, uh, Monte Carlo uh, application was performed on inaccurate 3D soil structure data uh, by uh, running thousands of simulations for each point and average them. This is a, a typical Monte Carlo uh, approximation. Okay. So uh, to address this problem, we achieved extremely efficient simulation by using a, a convolutional neural network as a surrogate model. So first, uh, we uh, perform simulation by changing evaluation values for a small spatial area. And then uh, we divide the simulated data into a, a smaller labeled spatial data. So this level means a uh, uh, for example, class one means the uh, lowest damage and class five correspond to the highest uh, damage. So next we train the CNN by using uh, this label data in supervised way. And finally, we predict the four areas by using the trained CNN. So this means that the CNN becomes a surrogate model for simulation, okay? So uh, I'll show you the result. Uh, the left figure uh, shows the result on the supercomputer and the right figure shows the result of the proposed method, okay? So uh, color map shows the magnitude of the shaking. So as you can see the result look almost the same, but the amount of the computation time was reduced to about one over 3,000, okay? Very efficient. And also, uh, this table uh, uh, is a quantitative evaluation result of the proposed method. So, uh, so in the uh, so we, in, the, in the proposed method, uh, we formulate as a classification problem. So, case A shows the uh, classification error rate as a simple five class uh, problem. In the case B evaluation. Uh, if the classification is misclassified as an adjacent class, it is uh, considered correct, just an optimistic uh, variation. For example, even if class two is mistaken for class three, it means that uh, there is no significant difference in the damage of the earthquake. So it is regarded as a correct answer. So anyway, uh, we got a, a very nice result. So and uh, I'll show some demonstration. Okay, so this uh, demonstration is a simulation of uh, shaking that would occur if Tokyo were hit by a magnitude eight class earthquake. Okay, this is just a simulation, not to yell, of course. So um, this is the ground surface and the ground structure. Uh, okay. And this is simulation result. And the red areas uh, indicate greater shaking. Okay. So, so clearly, so magnitude of shaking depends on the ground structure, very nonlinear. 
So, so uh, of course, since it is meaningless to simulate only the shaping of the blunt surface, the uh, building model is used to uh, simulate the uh, uh, shaping of the building as well. So, so through a uh, simulation, it's possible to know which building is dangerous and uh, uh, take measures such as reinforcement in advance. So in this sense, uh, this type of simulation is very important. Okay. Okay, so uh, very recently uh, we have developed a more advanced simulation method. I mean, uh, specifically uh, when solving differential equation using the uh, green function uh, based method, uh, it's necessary to find the, you know, calculate the green function. Uh, but for nonlinear differential equations, it's very difficult to find, uh, calculate the green function analytically. So in contrast, we have made it possible to efficiently solve the green function by using DNN as a surrogate model. So uh, the results of this uh, research were uh, fortunately awarded in uh, some international conference. Okay, so using Fukaku. So uh, let's move on to the next topic, a non track historical sequence estimation. So, um, the area where the Philippine Sea Plate and the Eurasian Plate meet to uh, form a, a trench like uh, topography uh, on the seafloor is called the Nankai Trough. Okay. So, at uh, this uh, plate boundary along the Nankai Trough, uh, Philippine Sea Plate is subducting uh, beneath European Plate uh, at a rate of uh, uh, several centimeters per year. The plate on the uh, land side uh, that has improved in uh, uh, reached its limit and uh, it's uh, lifted up, the causing a huge earthquake. Okay. Uh, so since this process occurs repeatedly, so non of earthquakes occur repeatedly. So our challenge is to estimate the recurrence intervals of non of earthquake. The right figure uh, shows the sequence of um, a mega probe recorded in Nankai Trough consisting of three regions, Nankai, Tonankai, and Tokai, uh, over uh, about uh, more than 1,000 years. Okay. Uh, you can see that the uh, Nankai mega probes have occurred at uh, irregular intervals with large variations. Okay. So uh, conventionally, uh, based on the friction uh, loads uh, between the plate and the uh, Interaction cells. Uh, the mega probe cycle uh, have been uh, simulated to uh, reproduce the historical record. And uh, if the estimated cycle is cons uh, consistent with the past cycle, so future occurrence uh, may be predictable. So, and cycle simulation can be formulated by this uh, asperity model showing this uh, partial differential equation. So. It's uh, very uh, quite technical, so I don't explain the details. But the uh, important thing is that uh, this equation contains uh, uh, unknown parameters uh, that depend on the uh, location, AI, uh, BI, and LI. So, uh, so it cannot be simulated without uh, setting these parameters. Okay. So, and many uh, researchers have so far manually adjusted the friction parameters uh, controlling the uh, recurrence intervals to uh, reproduce such complex uh, mega probe cycles in the simulator. Now, here the uh, set parameter values based on the various information. Uh, but as uh, you uh, is shown this result, uh, desired results were not obtained. So, so actually, there is an error uh, nearly uh, 50 years of between the Hoe and Hansei aspects. Okay. So uh, we uh, propose a method based on the uh, new approach to this problem, uh, which I call the simulation-based machine learning. Uh, let me explain the uh, more. So in general, uh, machine learning, uh, you know, as especially deep learning, requires a large amount of training data. So 
uh, machine learning is difficult to apply when there is not enough observation data, as in the case of a, a major earthquake. So on the other hand, mathematical models such as a differential equation or partial differential equations have been studied uh, in the science field. So, but they are uh, not perfect, not complete, because uh, they include unknown parameters such as uh, friction parameters, as I said. So uh, simulation-based machine learning is to complementarily combine these two. And that is, uh, training data is artificially generated by simulating with a mathematical model by varying the parameters. And learning machine uh, such as DNN uh, is uh, trained to so inversely estimate the parameters from the data. Now after learning, uh, the unknown parameters of the mathematical model can be estimated from a small number of observation uh, because the relationship between the parameter values and the estimated data uh, has already trained, okay? Okay, I'll explain in detail in this program. So uh, we know the reasonable range of parameter. So we change the parameter value within that uh, range and uh, run large number of simulations. So uh, we have here parameter value uh, B and uh, time series sleep velocities. Then we try to inversely estimate the parameter B hat uh, from a set of uh, sleep velocities by uh, minimizing this uh, objective function. So maybe you can see uh, DNA can be uh, used to do that. But there's the problem. Uh, I mean, this task was not so simple because uh, so uh, sleep uh, velocity cycle can vary widely even when the difference in B varies in very, very small. So now if end to end DNA didn't work well, we found that. So to address this problem, uh, we propose a post-defined uh, learning approach as shown in this uh, figure. Uh, suppose that uh, we have a set of uh, strip uh, velocity cycles uh, generated by A simulated by changing parameter B. So given a set of uh, strip uh, velocity uh, cycles and uh, DNL, uh, roughly predict uh, uh, so target value B based on the classification and magnify the range, okay? So then DNN try to reduce the uh, residual uh, magnified R in a fine grained manner. So uh, I'll skip the detail, but uh, we also extended this idea to a more general uh, anchor-based regression programs, okay? So uh, this slide shows the result. Uh, this histogram uh, shows the histogram of errors in the estimated uh, B body. And the prediction error, error cycle was also obtained uh, as follows. Uh, first by uh, inputting the uh, cycle data of the uh, past Nankai uh, trough data to the DN after training. And we obtain B values. And then we uh, generate the cycle data by uh, simulation with the p value and calculate the error between the uh, generated cycle data and the past true cycle data. So uh, you can see our method could provide a much uh, more accurate uh, estimate than the night DNA. So this result uh, demonstrates the effectiveness effectiveness of a uh, uh, simulation-based machine learning approach. Okay. Okay, uh, let's move on the third topic. So as for this topic, I, uh, I'll explain in more detail, uh, including uh, some uh, mathematical formula. Okay. So our uh, next topic is uh, related to CMT inversion analysis using Gaussian process. Okay, Gaussian process is still very hot in machine learning community. Uh, because it's very general and uh, you know not DNA. Okay, so the stress stating that as crust is uh, uh, crucial to generation of as quicks. So direct measurement of the uh, state state, uh, the costly and the limit to the uh, shallow part of the crust. 
So the stress state is frequently uh, estimated from other sources of information. So uh, the central uh, centroid moment tensor CMT uh, analysis has been used as an indirect uh, stress indirect method. Okay. So the conventional uh, CMT analysis is based on the uh, basis function uh, expansion method. And so the computational cost is the uh, order M cubed. M is the number of model parameters. On the other hand, our new approach based on the GP uh, can reduce the uh, computational cost uh, because the number of model parameters is much larger than the number of observations. I'll explain that later. And a uh, further uh, advantage of uh, uh, formulation is that the uh, uh, covariance function in GP is derived analytically, not in other manner. So I'll explain the detail. Okay. So uh, first, let me uh, review the CMD analysis because uh, you are not familiar to this kind of uh, stuff. So uh, CMD analysis is an inverse problem that estimates a uh, uh, cluster stress tau at the crust from the stress tensor y at the surface. So uh, physically, uh, the cluster stress uh, causes the ground surface stress according to this uh, equation, okay? So CMT analysis is an uh, inverse problem of estimating the cluster stress tensor from the uh, observable uh, stress tensor at the surface. So far important. So uh, because uh, by uh, estimating the uh, stress tensor in the crust, it's possible to estimate the location of the future aspects, okay? And uh, yij uh, is a stress tensor at position x, and i and j are tensor indices, okay? I mean, the, you know, in uh, three-dimensional world, x, y, y, z, and z, x, uh, planes and for each plane, uh, x, y, z, uh, three direction. So in principle, CMT has nine component tensor, but uh, uh, for symmetry and uh, other reasons, uh, it is re represented by a seismic uh, sphere with only uh, three components. And furthermore, uh, in convention for visual understanding, it's, it's, uh, it's represented as a pattern uh, so quantified into five types of uh, visualization, okay, these symbols. And capital A is the size of aspect and uh, uh, is uh, computed by the seismic uh, moment, uh, depending on the uh, uh, magnitude of the aspect, okay. So uh, uh, let me pass the conventional approach. Uh, the Terakawa and Matsura, uh, 2008 solved this inverse problem using the method of the basis function expansion. Uh, the uh, stress field is uh, expressed as this linear uh, combination tau of x uh, of a m fixed basis function with a vector of a model parameter a. Okay. And uh, observation equation and uh, uh, prior information are expressed in terms of uh, uh, probability uh, distribution day, okay? And uh, uh, using the base rule, uh, we can uh, obtain the optimal vector A, star, a hat and the shear of A hat uh, by using a you know, simple uh, linear algebra. Uh, and uh, this is a common method that is still in operation today. But uh, clearly, uh, inverse matrix calculation uh, it's computationally extensive, as you know, uh, on the order of the cube of M, and M is usually uh, on the order of several thousand or 10,000, okay? So uh, this approach was difficult to analyze on a large scale. Also, uh, as will be shown later, uh, 4D CMT, 4D means uh, uh, including the time revolution uh, analysis not possible in principle, okay? So in contrast, uh, the proposed GP approach can solve these uh, two problems. Okay, I'll explain this. Okay, uh, let me explain the formation by GP. I explained uh, how 
uh, the GMT analysis is formulated by uh, GP. So first I'll explain the forward mode as a regression model. Uh, that is the uh, forward mode mean the problem is to uh, estimate the stress tau asterisk at the arbitrary position x asterisk. So suppose that the unknown stress field tau x over a Gaussian process so with a mean function and a uh, covariance uh, function. And this means that uh, uh, tau x at arbitrary finite end positions of a uh, multiple uh, multivariate Gaussian distribution shown in this uh, equation. Okay. Uh, we have new and uh, care uh, our prior knowledge on the stress field uh, tau x. Okay. I mean, the whole example mu, uh, mean function should be zero because uh, you know, uh, this means the stress uh, shows no uh, pre preferred direction, direction uh, clearly. And the k, uh, xi, and xj uh, can be uh, homework to this uh, equation. Uh, this means that so stress field are smoothly varied with the characteristic amplitude sigma s and the correlation length sigma l. Okay. So, and also the prior distribution of stress task at the single portion x asterisk uh, is uh, assumed to be Gaussian. Okay. Uh, then, uh, uh, suppose that we obtain a uh, direct measurement of the cluster stress uh, d and with observation error sigma l and seek uh, uh, estimate tau asterisk at the uh, arbitrary position x asterisk. So according to the uh, model assumption, uh, this one, um, the joint distribution with d and the tau asterisk is given by this uh, equation. Okay. So uh, we have uh, kij and uh, this uh, covariance function divided at data and uh, estimate uh, positions. Uh, then the, uh, using the uh, formula of a conditional distribution of a Gaussian distribution, the posterior distribution of tau asterisk uh, for given data d is uh, easily computed uh, as the, this equation. It's also a uh, very simple uh, calculation. And uh, uh, so optimal value of the hyperparameters, sigma s, sigma l, and uh, sigma m, uh, so determined by the maximizing the marginal likelihood in the conventional way, okay? So uh, next I'll explain the CMT data inversion using Gaussian process. This is a very important uh, point in this formulation. So uh, let me uh, explain in more details. Uh, suppose that uh, we obtain the CMT solution the N aspects D children, okay? Uh, then the joint distribution of D children and the tau asterisk would be written as the uh, Gaussian, okay? Uh, but the uh, major difference from the previous regression formula formulation is that the two physical quantities, y and tau, these are stress, are involved in the single expression. So I mean, the, uh, we should clarify the two points. One is the, the mean and the covariance function of GMT solutions uh, must be properly defined. And other ones, uh, so different kind of variations, tau and y, must be treated in the cross term. Okay. So, uh, as you know, in the case of a normal regression problem using the Gaussian process, uh, we can consider the covariance function, the one single space. For example, uh, if two inputs are very close, the corresponding output are also close. And so, Gaussian kernel is used for that, for that case in, in some other manner. On the other hand, here we have uh, two different surfaces, uh, geographical surface and host surface. Our fault is uh, uh, done so in Japanese, okay? And uh, so uh, we need to consider not only only the covariance function uh, in each space, uh, but also uh, the covariance function between the two spaces, okay? So, I explained that there is a, a relationship uh, between the uh, two spaces uh, through the, this physical equation, okay? So actually using this uh, relationship, 
So we can uh, analytically derive the kernel function between the two spaces. Uh, this is the important point in this formulation. I will explain in more detail. Okay. So uh, first, let me uh, explain the mean function uh, using observation equation. Uh, this one is uh, observation equation. The mean function is computed as so uh, because the expectation value is uh, computed only on the you know, random variable dependent on the t term. So uh, moreover, its expectation uh, becomes zero because uh, we assume stress showed no preferred direction a priori, so as a prior distribution. So this is okay. And similarly from the physical equation and the fault stress assumptions, Kij, uh, can be calculated analytically as follows. Uh, using the equation one and two, uh, Kij can be calculated as from the definition of the uh, covariance function and the equation one, uh, we obtain this uh, equation. And after the rearranging the equation and uh, using the equation two, uh, we, uh, we obtain this uh, equation. And finally, uh, we got uh, this result. Okay, because that, you know, exponential uh, integral is very easy to compute. Okay. And also, uh, I skipped the detail, but the cross term of the covariance function can be uh, calculated similarly. Okay, no approximation. Okay. So uh, the uh, remaining components are uh, calculated in the same way and uh, finally obtain the uh, joint distribution the entire. Uh, okay. So uh, it's important to note that the uh, mean and the covariance functions are uh, obtained analytically from the CMT equation without uh, manual setting. Okay. So uh, calculating the posterior distribution of the power from this equation, we can estimate the CMP inviting. Okay. So uh, this table summarizes the differences between the conventional and the proposed method. So as I said, M is much larger than M. M is the number of model parameters, and N is the number of data. Okay. So GP approach is much more efficient than the conventional method. Okay. But also, we apply the uh, conventional method and our method to real data. Uh, specifically, we apply the uh, areas which were uh, uh, particularly active after the Tokai earthquake in 2011. Uh, you remember this one, maybe. Uh, the spacing of the basic function was set at uh, 20 kilometer horizontally and uh, 10 kilometer vertically. Okay. And the left figure uh, shows the uh, earthquake uh, distribution, and the right figure shows the observed stress on ground surface. Uh, the number of observation points was uh, 2,423, and the number of basis function was set to 9,375. Okay. So uh, this figure uh, compares the result of a CMP inverse analysis using the conventional state of the art method. And this is the uh, basic function method and the proposed method, okay? Uh, as long as uh, you can see uh, from these figures, the uh, story uh, results uh, are almost the same, but the uh, uh, computational time of uh, uh, method was uh, reduced by the factor of about 60. They're very efficient, very fast. So uh, this, since uh, cluster stress is not measured, uh, only God knows. So uh, it's difficult to quantitatively evaluate the uh, estimation result. But the GP method could get results uh, similar to those obtained by using a basic function method. And the basic function method had already been validated on artificial data. So uh, we can say that the uh, GP based formulation is useful in the sense that. Uh, it can much more efficiently estimate a cluster stress than the base function method. Okay. So uh, this figure uh, shows the application results for the entire Japanese uh, anti pair parable. Uh, GP method can efficiently calculate the entire Japan at once 
the way as the conventional mess will not. So, uh, although the uh, period is different, uh, we uh, confirm that the stress field are uh, uh, generally similar to those in previous uh, studies uh, published in the paper. Okay. So, and also our GP approach can be easily extended to time evolution model. Uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, covariance function of time dependent stress field and the covariance function of the time dependent CMT solution as follows. Uh, uh, for the lack of time, I won't see the details today, uh, but uh, I showed some result. So, in fact, we uh, applied this method to the time evolution of the stress field. The estimation result is shown in this. Uh, figure. Uh, you can see the you know uh, dominant change is estimated at the edge of the source region at of the Tokyo earthquake. Okay, so uh, so in addition, the following observations. Okay, these observations can be made from the result of this estimation. Uh, it's a lack of time. I don't the detail, but uh, we found that uh, many informative. Uh, Fine findings uh, obtained from this uh, analysis. Okay. So uh, let's summarize this study. Uh, this study can be uh, uh, summarized uh, as follows, but uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm not read it up due to the lack of time. Uh, but I think that uh, this study is uh, also important uh, achievement in that uh, it was solved efficiently by targeting physical equation with machine learning technique, in this case, a GP, okay? Okay, uh, in the rest of the time, I uh, briefly introduce about the three ongoing studies, okay? So uh, this uh, research is uh, uh, in collaboration with the uh, uh, Japan Meteorology Agency. Uh, so, you know, uh, in recent years, uh, extensive damage caused by a strong typhoon has become an issue, okay? Uh, for example, typhoon number 10 in Japan in 2021 uh, caused a record-breaking wind and uh, heavy rainfall. So many houses were damaged. Uh, currently in Japan, uh, model developed in the, in the US and the partially modified version is used to uh, forecast uh, typhoon intensification, okay? So uh, this model uh, estimates the uh, uh, temporal change in the central pressure of a typhoon from uh, about uh, 24 environmental features, uh, such as sea, surface, temperature, and uh, uh, total humidity, and so forth. So uh, this table shows the uh, result of uh, uh, several models and uh, compares it with the current JMA model. And uh, so intensifying typhoon is uh, uh, defined as a typhoon uh, drops 20 hectopascal in central pressure after 48 hours and uh, formulate it as a problem to uh, judge the whether it is an uh, intensifying typhoon or not. Okay, so we have considered a variety of models and uh, have found the uh, uh, a slight improvement in accuracy over the current GMA model, but it's not sufficient and uh, is uh, currently undergoing refinement. Okay, uh, GMA model use only environmental features, uh, but uh, we are uh, our takes a uh, uh, March model approach using the uh, satellite images at the same time. Okay, and uh, this uh, research is also a uh, uh, collaboration with GMA. Uh, in JMA, uh, three uh, numerical forecast model uh, with uh, different temporal and uh, uh, spatial resolutions uh, integrated to uh, provide a more accurate uh, weather forecast. Okay, this is the real operation in Japan. And that is a temperature, uh, precipitation, and the wind forecast. Uh, currently, the JMA is using simple average in actual operation. Of course, some uh, Bayesian abbreviation or some other method has been proposed, but uh, these are not unstable. So the JMA uh, uses this simple average. 
So we are developing a more advanced method to uh, improve the weather hope with the game. Okay. And this is the final uh, topic. Uh, this uh, study is uh, uh, holding uh, cluster uh, dislocation. The model is uh, generally expressed by a partial differential equation. Uh, uh, conventionally, the solution was uh, obtained by the uh, boundary element method or the finite element method. So, uh, however, uh, the boundary uh, element method is by the green function, uh, which is computationally insidable for uh, materials with nonlinearities. And the uh, finite element method requires uh, discrete relation. Uh, in, I mean, a mesh, uh, there are so many meshes it required. Okay, therefore, the theoretical analysis of infinite regions is impossible. So, on the other hand, uh, we have developed a complementary uh, um, new method, new approach, uh, modeling based on physics informed neural networks. So, specifically to deal with uh, this continuity, uh, we transform to a polar coordinate system. And uh, uh, this modeling uh, can flexibly uh, represent arbitrary geometric structures and uh, uh, mechanical properties of rocks, uh, which cannot be achieved with the existing method. So furthermore, uh, uh, it has a outstanding feature that can be extended to uh, inversion analysis, origin state process and purpose. So uh, recently we submitted a paper to uh, Nature Communication and, uh, and is uh, uh, currently under review. Okay. So uh, I think uh, this uh, result is uh, uh, very uh, valuable at Lincoln IP because uh, we can uh, demonstrate how machine learning technologies can contribute to the development of the scientific research. Okay. Okay, uh, it's uh, time to stop. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Nao Nuri Sensei. Are there questions for uh, Nao Nuri Sensei? Ueda Sensei? So one thing that I, I thought was interesting is that you end up uh, showing these uh, examples from, let's say, earthquakes. Uh, mm -hmm. how, how do you have access to this particular data? Is this publicly available? Uh, yeah, or so some... Uh government organization has this kind of data mm -hmm. also some data is available or you know i mean to me this is very interesting i think um these particular events need to be studied mm -hmm. and uh, you have shown that machine learning techniques are quite good in predicting but has scalability challenges yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and um with a bit of work, we can scale and do the predictions. So this is very nice. So yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. So the reason why we are collaborating with, uh, you know, some organization, uh, some experts. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think this is this is a must and a great idea. Yeah. And also, so fortunately, AI is very passionate. So they asked us, uh, is it okay? Uh, is it useful for AI and to this kind of stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. We are very interested in using the AI. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so are they? May, may I also ask a question? Yes. Also, uh, about simulation-based machine learning. Uh -huh. So this is really a fantastic idea, and and somehow yeah. it's related to like self-supervised learning. But uh -huh. now we have a physical simulator, so it must be much more reliable. Yeah. But my my, my question is: so how do you validate the trained model? Mm -hmm. Because now data is artificially generated, and yeah, yeah. we have never access to the true data. Yes. But uh, so we have a, a small amount of uh, real data from the observation. But uh, I, I said that before, uh, of course, the end can deal with such a small data. But uh, but we, on the other hand, we have uh, some mathematical model. So scientists develop uh, you know theoretically these models. Then they combine these uh, mascot model and a small amount of data. And also we can simulate uh, artificially generated simulated data from the mascot model by changing the unknown parameters. Then we try to uh, uh, you know, 
compare the result uh, generated data and the small amount of the real data. So kind of a data simulation. I see. Yeah. So yeah. how about the first, so you showed us the simulation video of earthquake in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. and, and that looks quite realistic and nice, but how do you also evaluate it? Evaluate? Evaluation means uh, is that simulation is correct or not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Once you slightly uh, change the initial parameter, maybe the uh -huh. you know, shake pattern may change a lot. Uh -huh. Because uh, we compare the you know uh, result uh, between the uh, result obtained by the supercomputer only, mm. and uh, also uh, we compare the you know our proposed uh, our result uh, by the proposed method. The result are almost the same. Yeah. Mm. In this sense, uh, approach is uh, uh, effective. I, mean, I see. So, because yeah. th this is my like basic question, like for mm. for simulation, mm -hmm. like in machine learning, we always validate our model based on cross validation or yeah, some, yeah. based on yeah. some validation data. Yeah. But the simulation people, they just generate some some prediction. Yeah. Say that it's real. Yeah. It's close yeah. to real, but no real validation. Like yeah. COVID-19 simulations are quite hard to show, for yeah. example. Yeah. So in this sense, we should combine these two. Yeah. Mm. For, I see. For variation. Mm -hmm. so, so in a sense, the contribution is so both. So machine learning can benefit from simulation. And also simulation community should also benefit from yeah. machine learning community. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we have, to, we have to community with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, thank you very much. That, that, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, I think there is a question in the box by uh, ah, Kibin Zhao Sensei. I'm wondering if these real world applications have potential reliability problems such as adversarial attacks. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, question was uh, why then? If there are real world applications have potential reliability problems such as adversarial attacks. Uh -huh. So, uh, Adversarial attacks is, uh, you know, very so important issue in this recently. I uh, think that the the kernel based approaches would be a little bit robust to these kind of attacks. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. That the neural network ones would uh, have yes. some problems. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think so. So uh, I, I, sorry, I don't really understand the question. So uh, I guess that the the question refers to um, the fact that when you have your data, if there is an adversary perturbing the data, uh -huh. perhaps that the system that you're doing using or building to to do the predictions may have robustness issues mm -hmm. or reliability issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, this is a grand challenge in machine learning directly. And I think that this is, this is a problem that we all need to think about, uh, mm. maybe not just in this particular instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, other questions uh, for Ueda Sensei? All right, this is then perfectly on time. Uh, so thank you very much for your uh, talk. And uh, well, looking forward to the next uh, talk series. So um, have a great evening in Japan and have a great day in uh, Lausanne and Switzerland. Yeah.